what I am going to be trying to do is to present a set of ideas that I believe have to become the basis for education, not only of formal institutions, academic and otherwise, but informal, public, and academia. So let me begin. Okay. There is general agreement among scholars that humans are now in what is defined as the Anthropocene, best described in the Encyclopedia of Earth as follows. The Anthropocene defines Earth's most recent geological time period as being human influenced or anthropogenic based on overwhelming global evidence that atmospheric, geologic, hydrologic, and other earth system processes are now altered by humans. The word combines the root anthropo, meaning human, with the root scene, the standard suffix for epoch in geologic time. The Anthropocene is distinguished as a new period, either after or within the Holocene, the current epoch, which began approximately 10,000 years ago with the end of the last glacial period. The Anthropocene is a starting point in terms of major revolution, in terms of humans moving away from being hunter-gatherers to farming and agriculture, and for all intents and purposes, the onset of evolution of what can be described as civilization and societies, inclusive of varieties of politics, economics, religion, and culture based on philosophies, concepts, and ideas, or what might be best described as operant paradigms. These operant paradigms can be traced to human attempts to understand, define, and act on three major relationships namely humans and divinity, humans and nature, and humans vis-a-vis -vis humans. Civilizations, Eastern and Western, have in a broad sense operated on two such paradigms or philosophies, describing the nature of the three relationships named above. The first one, namely the polytheistic Eastern, which predates the monotheistic Western by millennia, is based on the idea that humans and the divine are inseparable. Humans are part and parcel of nature, inextricably connected and interdependent, and all life, including human life, is one and the same, as opposed to the ideas of Western civilization that postulates that humans and the divine are wholly separate. God has given humans dominion over nature to understand and use for human progress and human life is sanctity personified over and above all other life. Both of these paradigms are operating to this day, even though the Eastern paradigm is steadily receding into the background, even as recent realizations seem to be forcing humans to reconsider returning to it, notwithstanding the fact that the Western paradigm has now emerged as the dominant one over the last two millennia. A major difference in these two paradigms is that the Eastern paradigm pursued knowledge for knowledge's sake and in the process obtained profound understandings of the external world, but was primarily preoccupied with knowing the inner human self based on inner directed explorations to obtain release from the human condition as in moksha or nirvana. The Western paradigm moved forward within the framework of what is best described as the Baconian method, directed at the external world, thus obtaining discoveries and inventions to apply and use for human progress, progress deemed to be limitless, based on understanding and exploiting nature for meeting human material needs. An important distinction needs to be made with respect to the inherent nature of the two paradigms. The distinction is with respect to the scope and extent of human agency. I'd like us to keep in mind this word, human agency, in obtaining desired outcomes and futures. Implied in the Western paradigm is the assumption that human agency, as ordained by the divine, is the sole determinant of desired outcomes and futures. 
The Eastern paradigm, on the other hand, while not eliminating human agency, is much more fatalistic and demands human agency be used within the framework of broader ideas and values described above. Given this background, it will now be appropriate to assess the state of the planet and the general condition of humans on it, and more important to examine whether the idea of human agency as the sole determinant of desired outcomes and futures is valid and sustainable. The dominant paradigm operating for the last two millennia based on human agency as the sole determinant of desired outcomes has developed and implemented a plethora of ideas to create utopia. While it is important to acknowledge that the accomplishments are fantastic by way of improving the material condition of humans, uneven as it is, it would be fair to expect that utopia would have manifested long ago. Needless to say, however, anyone looking dispassionately at the human condition and the state of the planet today, one would have to conclude that utopia is nowhere near to being achieved and actually in many respects, we are confronted with the stark reality of dystopia and unintended consequences. Human populations have burgeoned from hundreds of millions to billions, poverty, disease, pandemics, war, destruction of the natural world, extinction of species, climate change, impending exhaustion of natural resources, etc., is there for all to see. It is at this critical juncture, it is imperative, therefore, that we take a second look at how the future comes about. In order to get such an understanding, it is necessary to first attempt to describe a model that will best illustrate the process in action that causes the future to come about. The following is an attempt to outline the framework of a model that more closely approximates the logical structure of the real world the model can be described as follows. It is a three-dimensional matrix. The first axis is humans as participants, individually and collectively, concurrently functioning as agents at eight different levels of identity, continuously attempting to optimize their multiple interests, namely individual, family, neighborhood, city, state, region, nation, the planet. The second axis is the world around them in the natural realm, the hydrosphere, the biosphere, the zoosphere, the atmosphere, space and beyond, all in a constant state of flux naturally and otherwise. The third axis is the varieties of systems that humans have initiated and have then evolved into the current forms, social, economic, political, religious, cultural, et al. Similarly, in a state of constant flux. This complex three-dimensional matrix, mathematically speaking, equates to a mind-bogglingly huge number of dynamic interactions taking place sequentially and simultaneously every second, every minute, every hour, every day, and so on. Humans as agents between themselves, interacting with elements of the second and third dimensions Similarly, interactions within and between the elements of the second and third dimension, all resulting in outcomes and consequences that one can reasonably argue would be beyond any currently known means of managing towards a desired outcome and destroys the smug and misplaced notion of humans managing and obtaining desired outcomes and futures. The evidence to support this conclusion abounds all around us. Scholars around the world are suggesting that humans are at a critical juncture as to their future and, and that survival of the species is at risk if course corrections are not taken. As it relates to course corrections, recent scholarship has given rise to ideas and concepts that enable a better understanding of how the future comes about, human agency notwithstanding. A complete and comprehensive presentation is beyond the scope of this paper, but a list of them with brief definitions is valid and required. First, the idea that the earth is being, or Gaia, the Gaia hypothesis, also known as the Gaia theory, Gaia paradigm, or the Gaia principle, proposes that living organisms interact with their inorganic surroundings on earth to form a synergistic 
and self-regulating complex system that helps to maintain and perpetuate the conditions for life on the planet. I would refer to the work of Dr. James Lovelock, who introduced the notion of Gaia. There are seven principles underlying all life. One, the principle of abstraction. There is something intangible behind the life in physical bodies, indeed behind all matter, and that the immateriality is revealed by the flow of time, which literally makes things into events. All forms of this mysterious noumenon is abstraction. The principle of interrelatedness, which geneticists tells us, is a measurable fact among all members of a species, including humanity in all its races, and on deeper investigation, turns out to apply as well to whole kingdoms of creatures, not to mention interrelations between kingdom and kingdom, or between world and world without end. The principle of omniscience of life, which denies that an impervious boundary has ever been found between any of the kingdoms, or for that matter, between life and non-life, which leads to the inescapable conclusion that all rocks and seas and worlds, and consequently the entire universe, must in sense be alive. The polarity principle, which recognizes the balance and mutuality of the opposites that we see everywhere, things like light and darkness, good and evil, male and female, predator and prey, matter and energy, all of which by their contrast, give definition to life and make it work. The principle of transcendence, which refers to the development of our perspectives on time and space as we grow older, as well as the progressive absorption of all self into a wider awareness as one matures spiritually. The, the germination of worlds, a critical event that seems to happen once to every celestial organism and after billions of our billions of years of slow evolution. The greatest mystery of all, the ultimate mystery of divinity or whatever you choose to call the unknowable essence that leading thinkers have long believed somehow exists beyond creation and maintenance of all body, mind, and spirit, not to mention behind every other known or unknown wonder of the universe. The future, therefore, as I would put it, is an emergence based on the description of the complex model given above. It would be easy to see that the future emerges out of the interaction with human inputs as active walkers. Some processes that are inherent in the emergence are the elements of complexity, the tipping points, catastrophes, self-organization, and so on. Let me quickly, briefly describe each of these, and then I will conclude. Complexity, simply defined as the study of the phenomena which emerge from a collection of interacting objects. Complexity characterizes the behavior of a system or model whose components interact in multiple ways and follow local rules, meaning there is no reasonable higher instruction to define the various possible interactions. The term is generally used to characterize something with many parts, where those parts interact with each other in multiple ways, culminating in a higher order of emergence greater than the sum of its parts. Catastrophes. The catastrophes occur when, as we move in a continuous way through the family of parameters, usually by smoothly changing a stable fixed point of the family, loses its stability. This change of stability forces the system to move abruptly to the region of a new stable fixed point. The butterfly effect, which we all already know about. The butterfly effect is the sensitive dependence on initial conditions in which a small change in one state of a deterministic nonlinear system can result in large differences in a later state. Tipping point, the critical point in a situation, process or system beyond which a significant and often unstoppable effect or change takes place. And probably the most important, self-organizing systems. Self-organization, also called spontaneous order, is a process where some form of overall order from local interaction between parts of an initially disordered system. The process can be spontaneous when sufficient energy is available 
not needing control by an external agent. All this that I have presented basically is to point out that we overstate the idea of human agency as the sole determinant of outcomes. Students, academic and otherwise, must and be made aware of the fact that the future, at least as far as I think about it, is an emergence out of a complex interplay of multiple factors that I have just described. So what it means basically is a human agency must play the role of enlightened self-interest as a component, as an input to the system, which can then create an outcome that we would have desired. The idea that you can create futures in a top-down fashion, in a short-term, four-year, five-year, 10-year basis is a fool's errand. Thank you. Okay.